Well, this is Mike Leahy. Welcome. Thanks for joining us today for our Pulse Dashboard and Analytics software, our fund fundamentals training. And on this next screen, this is my picture and Bart Fannin's picture, and we can all shake hands over the phone. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for your support of our software. If you're not familiar with our company, we've been in business forever. Uh, we have worked with McCullough forever. We are manufacturing and distribution ERP specialists. And one of our core competencies is our ability to extract data out of your McCullough database to help you make better and more timely decisions and make better use and, and make McCullough easier to, to, to use. Um, some of the benefits that we talk about is uh, the information that's important is at your fingertips. In fact, all the information in McCola is at your fingertips and it's real time. And um, the, it, the tendency is to minimize custom crystal reports, custom Excel queries, SSRS reports, various things like that, and then have one place, kind of one, one place for shopping for uh, all of your reports. There's a big emphasis on shipping on time and focusing on shortages, uh, reducing inventory, and then focusing on, on what's really important for your job. Everything comes pre-developed with the software, so there's no testing, there's no, you literally can be using it you can buy it in the morning, have it installed, and use it that afternoon with your data. Uh, everything comes pre-configured. So in today's session, this really is going to be a training session. Uh, we'll, we'll show you some features of, features of the software along the way. But the idea is by the end of this one hour, we want you to get comfortable with sorting, filtering, grouping, using the column chooser, and using the, the right mouse button. And you'll hear that those, those terms over and over again, sorting, filtering, grouping, column chooser, and right mouse button. And if you can get comfortable with those five items, then you will be fearless with the software. You'll be able to navigate, you'll be able to, to extract data, you'll be able to uh, do, do a lot of things. So that's what we're gonna focus on today, sorting, filtering, grouping, using the column chooser and the right mouse button. And uh, just to get us started, uh, this is the mantra of our software, that Macola has the data. In other words, the Macola database contains the raw data, but Pulse Dashboard has the information. So Macola has the raw data, and Pulse Dashboard converts that into information uh, to make better and faster decisions. Okay, so I sent out a handout uh, I sent three handouts, and the one we're going to use right now, and if you didn't get a chance to print it, you know, it, it, we're going to follow pretty much the outline. So starting on page two, um, we talk about, you know, how can you, um, how can you get started? How, how can you get, get, get focused? And one of the things that we talk about is maybe to pinpoint five reports. When you get started, pinpoint five reports or pinpoint five to 10 reports and work with a coworker, kind of a buddy system and master those reports. Just, just go into it easily, master those reports um, and, and then feel comfortable with it and then build on from there. So again, on page two, we talk about sorting, filtering, grouping, uh, using the column chooser and right mouse button. So let's, let's use a, a couple examples on how that might be. So I'm gonna go into the inventory module. And today we're not gonna focus on data. We're gonna focus on techniques and we're gonna focus on how to navigate and so on. So this is a, the, the stock status report. Um, and th the first thing we wanna talk about is sorting. So all you have to do is just click on a field and that sorts it ascending. You'll see this little carrot ascending if I click on it again, it's sorting it descending. And I can do that with any field here. I can take this product category description and I can sort that down ascending, see the little carrot, ascending or descending. And if I want to do two fields, what I can do is I can say, um, click here and then I can go right click and say sort as, so that gives me two Two of them, but the easier one is just click on it here, ascending or descending. 
okay, filtering. On your screen, there is this blank row. This is not a mistake. This is not an error in the software. This is what we call a filter row. So let's say that I'm looking for a part number that has um, um, 3089 in it. So the filter row here, remember I, I'm gonna do this again. I'm going to this blank row and I'm gonna put in 3089. And so it's bringing up all the parts that contain, the nice thing about it is it's a contains, not starts with or ends with, contains 3089. I'll, I'll, we'll practice this again here. We're going to look up all pulleys. So I put in P-U-L-L. -L. That's all I had to put in, and it brings that up. Or I could have put in two and the inch sign, and it brought up, and then get the two in there, two inches. So this is very, very powerful, this filtering. And you'll see that every column has the filter row and some of them are already, if it's, if it's like a numeric field, it has an equal sign. Um, th this other one is a contained sign. Okay, so we've talked about sorting, we've talked about filtering. Um, let's talk about grouping. So let's say that I have this report, but I want to, I mean, I can sort it down by product category, but then I have to wind my way through here. So we provided a, um, a grouping capability. So see right here, every single screen has this. It says drag a column heading here to group by that column. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the product category description and I'm gonna hold on, hold on to it with my left mouse and I'm just going to drag it right up here and I'm gonna let go. Now what's happening, you can see cartons, fabricated frames. These are my different product categories. And if I want to, I can go right click and say expand all or right click and say collapse, or I can hit the plus sign and just open up one at a time. So let's, let's go over that again. I'm gonna put this back. We're going to take a field, a column, and we're going to drag it, we're gonna, hold on to it with our left mouse. We're gonna drag it up to this white area here that already says drag a column heading here, and I let go. And then in this white area, the blank area at the top, I can right click and say fully expand, or right click and say fully collapse. Or if I want to, I could just select one category, packaging, and just open that up and evaluate that at a time close it up, go on to the next one, and so on. And then when you're done with this, you can just put this back or leave it there permanently. So hopefully you're seeing, if it, it, you might be saying to yourself, wow, well, these are the five things that are that important. Uh, we've already gone down through three of them. This is a no-brainer. And yes, it's a no-brainer, and that's what we're, that's what we're emphasizing today that um, we wanna make you fearless using the software. Okay, so we've talked about sorting, we've talked about filtering, we've talked about grouping, and now we're gonna talk about using the column chooser. So I'm going to make believe here that um, this is how you remove fields from here. You just drag them off either up or down until they turn into an X. So I'm gonna make believe that the product category is on here. So you look at this report and you say, Mike, this is really great, except that you forgot to include the product category. So we're gonna go over here to the this grid. It's like a piece of graph paper. It's what I call the column chooser. Um, Stacy Benison on our staff, she calls it the magic button. So I'm gonna click on it. And what you're going to see these are all the data fields in Macola and in Dashboard that have anything to do with inventory. And they're all at my fingertips. They are all in English, business English, so there's no underscore this, this, you know, there's no technical stuff. Um, if you're a technical person, you can hover over the field and see that, you know, what field, what file name, what table name is coming from. But the idea is that we've converted everything to a business English format. And 
what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on here to sort this, and then I'm going to put in one of the product categories. So I'm going to put in CAT. And look what happens. I have the product category description and the product category that comes up. And I could have, maybe I didn't know how to do CAT, but I could have put in PROD for product. Well, then I get some more of them. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click. And you can see it brought it over to the right side. I'm going to, or I can drag it over here. But it's easier, or actually I highlight it and I have to say add to visible. So at this point, I can, I have these arrows up here and I can, you know, move those around if I want to, um, but, th but there's a better way to do that. Um, so at this point, let, let me, let me stay here just for a second. I mentioned as we got into this, that this gives you visibility about all the fields in, in Macola that have anything to do with your subject, which is in this case is inventory. But I want to emphasize that we in dashboard, we have expanded the scope of the software. We've expanded the scope of the inventory of sales, of production, of material requirements. So let's take a look in this case here. I've added inventory turns for the past 12 months. I've added a landed cost, but well, those are codes. Um, we are capturing on a rolling 24 month basis, we are capturing on hand quantities and on hand dollar amounts for each month. So here we have on hand dollars, the current year. So if we start in January, this 01 would be January and so on. And then I have the prior year quantity on hand for the current year, quantity on hand, and it just goes on and on and on. What we produced, what we purchased, and so on. So as we go along here, I want to show you, uh, you know, some additional f features that we're not just reading Macola and hoping for the best. We have, we've worked with the software for over 30 years. We know where all the shortcomings are. There's no on-hand quantities by month. There's no usage by month. You can't look at purchasing or your activity by month. So we, we have uh, provided that. So let's go back to our product category. I'm gonna press okay. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag this column over here to where I want it. Okay, so now you've learned something in that you can move these columns around. So let's say that you like to have the description to be the first field Maybe you don't want the location to be the first field. So let me let me make a point about this. These changes that I'm making, moving these columns around, sorting and whatever, um, the next time if I exit from the software and come back again, these the positions of these the positioning of the column headings will remain the same. So in other words, the changes are only affecting you. Don't worry about your coworker. If you're moving something around, you're not, you're not messing up anybody's screen. Um, and there's no save function within the software because it's saving it as you go along. Like when I move this here, it has saved that. If I move that back, it has saved that. So again, what we're emphasizing is the column chooser allows us to add fields if we want to get rid of a field, we drag it off until it turns into an X, either above or below. We can move the columns around as we want to. And since we're here, let me emphasize some other things that we've done because everybody's interested with inventory. It's the largest asset of the company, typically. So we've added months of inventory on hand. We've added usage. This is average monthly usage three, six, and 12 months. We've also added total usage, three, six, and 12 months. So this allows you to, to see a trend, like this one particular part here, for the period of 12 months, we used about 360 a month. Now we're only using 225. So that means it looks like it's gone down about a 30%, 25%. So that's you wouldn't know that if you were just looking at the on-hand quantity or and 
And then we show date of last usage, date of last purchase, date of last inventory activity, date of last manufacturing, and date of last sale. And then these additional fields that I have here are to emphasize, we talked before about what was our usage by month. So here we are, usage January, February, March, April, May, June, and so on. So let's 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 skip back. To, let's skip to another screen, and um, let's let's go, for example, to um, purchasing, and let's take a look at at open purchase orders. And again, we're we're talking about sorting, filtering, grouping, using the column chooser, and now we're going to talk about this this right mouse button. Okay, you have tabs. Well, first of all, you have, a, you have a total section purchasing. Then I have tabs. I have a summary tab. I have a purchase order to be received tab. And then within the tab, I might, I might have one or more reports. So let's go back here to the summary. You know, here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six reports. Here we just have, have one report. So what we're talking about now is the right mouse button. So I'm going to right click on this tab, and this is what I get. This is how I change the color of the tab, for example. But if I right click on the, the blue bar, the, the report name, I get a different set of, of, uh, of options. So let's go over that. Let's right click, we're gonna practice first, right click on the tab name. Well, first of all, you can now make, you can retitle this if you want to. Maybe you don't like the titles that we've given you, or maybe you want to have it purchase orders for location one versus purchase orders for plant two or something like that. Um, you have an option here to refresh the tab. So let's talk about refreshing just for a minute. I can right click and say refresh the tab. I can double click on this bar to refresh the tab. I can right click on the bar, the blue bar, and say refresh the tab. So we're gonna go back up here. We talked about refreshing. If I wanna add a new report to this, what I can do is I can go here and say, uh, maybe on this, maybe I wanna add the stock status report onto this, uh, this screen. Um, we have the concept of save and share. What save and share means is that you've made a backup copy of it or you've made a copy of it to use in another report. Um, I'll give you an example of the, of the um, save and share. I'm gonna to go to executive. I'm gonna to go to this customer order summary. I'm gonna click on actual orders. Okay, here I have the customer name, so on the margin and so on. But look at all the other, these are all the save and share reports that I've developed that I can use optionally when I go to the screen. I don't have to see these columns every time. Maybe I wanna see one that has the item number and descriptions. Maybe I have a report that I just use a month in. Maybe I have a report that I wanna show by salesperson in the margins. So that's what this down arrow is. I'm gonna go back to my uh, well, let's leave it this. We, this is by customer with details. So before we were looking at just items or just customers, now we combine them together. So each one of these layouts, every time I have one of these layouts and I make a change to it, then I go to save and share down here. I wouldn't worry about this, remembering all this today. I can retitle this however I want to. And then I can say save, I can say save just for me. So this is a way that you can, can make a backup copy of something. So let's go back to our, our um, purchasing screen. So again, the emphasis is when you see this down arrow, that means I have optional save and share reports that I can look at. In the purchasing here, We didn't, we didn't have that. We just had, we, we don't have any save and share reports. But we're, let's go back to our, our mission here, which is right click. Um, I can copy and paste. What I can do is I can, for example, right click and say copy. 
in the wrong place. Um, I can, I can, yeah, that was that was copying an individual report. We're we're, we're here at the tab name. Um, we'll come back to this paste. Um, okay, if if you develop a report that you only use at month end, then there's no reason to refresh that report every time you hit refresh up here. It, there's no reason to hit that. So you can uncheck this, and now it will not refresh until I manually refresh it. This is where I can change my colors and I can move these around. So what I can do, for example, is I can move, see how this is moving here? I'm moving it to the right, to the right, then to the left, to the left, to the left. And I can also clone the tab. So let's say that I wanna, I have some special analysis that I have to do, but I don't wanna tinker with my I don't want to tamper with this report. So I can say clone the tab. And if I look way over here, it has made a mirror copy of it. And I can use this now to, to make changes to. I have so a we're going question. To finish here yeah. with this. You ready? Yep. Yep. It's well, and I forgot to mention, I got started on this. Um, Bart Fannin, our operations manager, I apologize, um, is helping us today. And um, please submit questions. We have a lot of people today, so we may not be able to open it to uh, 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 open audience, but please send him questions. And Bart, do you have a few? Yeah, just one. Yeah, so if you, if anyone else does have a question on, on your uh, screen, you should have a questions area where you can submit one or a follow-up question as well. Uh, so someone has asked, uh, they have an AR aging report with sales rep name and customer name. They're wondering if they can have it do a sum by the customer within Pulse, or do they need to download it to Excel in order to do this? Oh, no, you can, um, there is a sum feature that will, there's a sum feature and there's a subtotal feature. Um, so you're talking about Let's go back over here. You're talking about an accounts receivable aging. Is that what the report was? That's correct, yes. Um, and, uh, and I see it, and what you've, what you've added is, well, you, there's a couple things you can do. If you, if you put a, um, a right click down here and say sum, and you export this to Excel, uh, it will give you a subtotal, which you already have here. Um, another way to think about it would be to, um, let's go Let's go back to uh, inventory. This, this is a good question. Let's go back to inventory. When I go into the column chooser, there is a function here called merge cells. And that's similar to the merge function within Excel um, so if I say merge location, let's do location. Um, what's happening now is it only shows the very first item for that location. And then I'd have to come back down here. And I think at this point, if I was to export this to Excel, it will give me a subtotal. Like here, if I put in a, a right click and say count, then it will give me, and I go up here to export that, it'll give me account by location, account of records by location. So you may have to call our support desk on that. Um, the accounts receivable, I didn't quite understand because um, we don't, you, you may have created that by, by um, I guess I'm not sure how that was created, but um, maybe this got you a little bit of the way, but if, if you, and this is a good point that if you go up to help and about, then this shows the direct phone number and you, you're entitled to unlimited phone support, uh, unlimited training, unlimited retraining if you forget something. So, uh, you know, feel comfortable with, you can just send an email directly to our support by clicking here or call this phone number. Any other questions at this point? No, that's it so far, Mike. Okay.
Okay, so we were on our our um, inventory status, and we were we pretty much have gone through all of these. Um, we also have a function that not everybody has this function. It's more of a, on a need to know or on a if you're the administrator, there's the ability to publish tabs. So if you're a person in your organization that likes to make reports, um, you may have coworkers that say, Mike, that report looks really cool. Can you send me a copy of it? And what you do is you, you right click and say publish, and then you can publish it to yourself. You can publish it to everybody, or, or you can pick and choose the people that you want to send it to. So the publish feature is is very very good to uh, disseminate uh, good reports. Okay, so that was the right mouse button on the tab name, but then let's look at the right mouse button on the the the, the actual report name. So I can refresh the report. I can change the title. I can refresh the report. This is a little bit of crazy wording here. This reset cache data, but what it means is that there are some reports that when you refresh it, it may not be up to the second. It may be up to the last 30 minutes of the last hour. So if you say refresh cache data, what that does is that goes back all the way to the beginning and redoes everything from scratch to, to absolutely be certain you have the, the, the most current data. Um, this button allows you to, do, to fit the screen. Um, just like the cloning of the tab, you have a cloning of the report. And this this goes to a new window rather than a new tab. So I'll show you what that does. It just see here's the win there's one window, there's another window. And you can copy and paste. It it, it follows the same rules as Excel. Control C, Control V, Control X. Okay. So We've made it to the end here in terms of what are the basic things that you need to know about sorting, filtering, grouping, using the column chooser, right mouse button. Um, and in the handout, there's pictures of those buttons that you, you can um, um, can reflect back on. Okay, so let's talk about refreshing data because this is a utility, this is a program that provides real-time data so you come in in the morning, open this up, it'll appear, today's date will always appear. Um, it is possible to backdate this in, in some areas, but, but this comes up and you can say refresh current module, which means that if I'm in the executive, it'll, it'll uh, refresh everything in the executive. If I'm in inventory, it'll refresh everything in inventory. But in some cases, that may take a moment or two and you don't care about that. So you're, you're going to just double click, either right click and say refresh the entire tab. Let's say it had a bunch of reports, or I can just right click on the blue bar. Every single report has a blue bar and I can double click on there or I can right click and say refresh. Now, every 60 minutes, if you haven't touched the software, in 60 minutes, one hour, when you come back to refresh a report, so the stock status report is very, very interactive, very real time, on order, on on hand, um, allocated quantities. So if 61 minutes or two hours have gone by, when I refresh that, what it's going to do is it's going to go back and basically do what we called before this reset cache. It's going to go back to square one and and bring in. Um, to make sure you have uh, the correct data. And I should mention also this blue circle here, it's kind of hard to get to, but it also is a refresh button. And while Mike, we're over here, uh, uh, sorry, okay, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, Mike, someone, uh, this should be just a second, I think. Someone asked if you could uh, show again how to add another column to the screen. Oh, yes. Um, I'm going to go over here. Every screen has this grid the column chooser, I'm going to click on it. And these are the fields that are on my report. And these are the fields in in Macola or in dashboard that are available. So let's say that I want to add the material cost type. 
So I just go up to this blue row, this is the filter row, and I type in M-A-T for material cost type. Now I like to use this column over here. You see this is the abbreviated, but, but you can go into the middle here, M-A-T-E-R, see that's where it's spelled out material cost type all the way. So at this point, I can just double click and it will bring the field over or I can highlight it and say add to visible. And now it has add those fields, added the fields and I'm just gonna say okay. So again, I'm going to this grid, what we call the column chooser, what, what Stacy calls the magic button. And I would start in the middle here once you're an advanced user and you kind of have a hang of, of, see here, you have to know that it's O slash H. Over here, you just have to know it's on hand. So it might be good to start here in this full column caption until you get more comfortable with the software. And then this first column kind of tells you where things, where things came from. Like this is inventory his, historical, um, the item master, the item location file, MRP information and so on. So again, I'm going over to this, this what I call the grid or the column chooser and start in the middle. In my case here, M-A-T-E-R. And then double click or highlight it and say add to a visible, add to visible. This stuff up here, this is this is another filtering kind of thing. Now I also can can create a custom formula. We'll call it test. So you can add custom formulas to this, and what it's telling me, or what it's what it, what it's presenting to you, is very similar to um, Excel. Very very similar to the the formula editor. Um, so, for example, I can say I want to uh, just pick something that's that's here. We're going to take this uh, 12 month usage. So when I double click on here, see it brought it up here, and I, I I don't even have to go up here to click on anything. I can say my operators are divide by. I'm going to double click here. See how it brought that up, and then divide by three. So we can add so that was an example of, of a, a creating a custom formula. Okay, any any other questions that I can go over, Bart? Uh no, not at the moment. Okay. So it feels like we're we're really going slowly here, but we're gonna speed things up right now. We we've gone through the second page about Sorting, filtering, you probably heard enough about that. Um, please don't say that again, Mike, you're saying. Um, we talked about refreshing the data. We, and now we're talking about customizing screens. And again, um, you can move fields around, drag them however you want to. You can remove them. So I'm going to remove this material cost type and remove that until it turns into an X. Um, and again, emphasizing that if you like the item number on the left and everybody else in your company wants it on the right, it will remember it for each person individually. There's no save function. So moving on to page three, some of these things we've already talked about. And that is this uh, report icons. Every Every report has these icons up at the top over here. Everything exports to Excel. Everything exports to a printer, or they can be PDF'd, or they can be emailed. This is the refresh button. This is a filter button. We don't have to worry about that for our, our beginning class today. So this is the, the icons at the, at the blue bar level. And then for the report level, each one of these has a the column chooser export or print and export to Excel. So on page three, we go and, and we we uh, give you some examples of that. 
Okay, so now you're waiting to say, well, how do we? How do I create a new tab? I want to create something custom here. I want to. Uh, I want to experiment. So I'm going to hit this plus sign, and it's going to give me a blank screen. Now I can do a couple things. Remember before here, it said that I can right click and say copy. And I can right click and say paste. Here's that inventory status report. I'm going to resize it. So that, that allowed me to cut, copy and paste, but I also can, the blank tab, I can just go to the white area here and I can say I right click. Remember again, that's now you're using your right click button. And you're going to say add a new report. So I'm going to go down to purchasing here, for example, and I'm going to add the purchase orders scheduled to be received. And this is this. Okay, so here's the reports. Okay, so let's talk about what this means. This means that we have every report has a red wrench, a red setup icon. This one doesn't, but, but most of them do. And you can click on there and you can see, well, what, how, what, how do you want to show, do I want to show the request date? Do I want to make it based on promise date? Do I want to include released, unreleased, and so on. So that's talking about adding a new report. And we've talked about modifying a report also on page four. The idea being that we can use the column chooser. So let's take let's take a slight break for a minute and let's let's talk about some cool things that um, might be helpful to you. You're seeing right now that you can right click and you can change the colors. That's a relatively new feature. I would suggest do not make it red because you can't see the lettering behind it. It's red on black. Um, if you're in the inventory area, and there are a lot of people here today with that, this is the inventory detail screen. This replaces McCullough's multiple level item view. Multiple level item view is an excellent report, and it was designed and released over 30 years ago. I was there when they released it. Hasn't changed one iota since then. So what we tried to do was to take it and, and take off on that. So I'm going to put in a part number, E3089. Okay, so what we have is, is um, and maybe you've seen this already, we have a, the summary area. This So white means that this is real time up to the second data. Remember these cream colored fields, months of inventory on hand, date of last sale and so on. These are fields that are created within dashboard. Then we can go here and we can look at by location, by bin or by lot. So what's cool about this is I now can add columns to this because I have a column chooser. So I added quantity on order. I added quantity allocated. I added my three, six and 12 month usage to add, to give this report more strength. Then we have the ability to look at historically the past 12 months, what was our on hand by month, so on and so on. And then we do an MRP regeneration just for this one part. And we look week by week into the future. And a free lunch goes to everybody who says, Mike, this, this 3000 is wrong here. There's no reason they should not have keyed in a purchase order for this 3000 that wasn't needed. And of course, I put that in there on purpose to show what happens because you may not have any visibility to that without, without dashboard. Then we have the details of our MRP software. And I should explain, McCullough's MRP is superb. We use it all the time. We, we, we help our customers with it. In dashboard, we wanted to create a, an MRP module that refreshed uh, under 10 seconds, under 30 seconds, absolute most. Uh, we wanted you to be able to refresh and do an MRP regen all day long at will. 
uh, and have it go very, very fast. Um, so that's what this is our MRP data. Then um, if this is a bill of material, it shows the, the components. And then there's a where used for everything. But this is the new feature that you may not be aware of. And that is the ability to add buttons. So if I go to my red wrench setup, here are where I add buttons. And we will take one off and we will demonstrate how to do that. Okay. So just to, just to show you what this is, if this was a, um, well, that we have inventory turns. All right, so let me put my part number back. Okay, I have inventory turns. I have inventory aging. If this was a saleable item, I'd be able to show sales by customer, uh, what was invoiced by month. Here's my inventory usage information. Here is my on-time shipping if this was a saleable product and my transaction history. So the, the nice thing about this is that I don't have to exit from here, go to another screen and so on. So let's talk about how are we going to add another button. And the button was the purchasing um, to be received. So I go to purchasing, I go to this purchase orders to be received. I right click and say copy. So at that point, it puts that report into memory. And I'm gonna go back to inventory, back to here, red wrench. And I'm gonna say, add the report from the clipboard. So right away, you're going to see something up here at the bottom. There it is, purchase order scheduled to be received. Now this is real wide, so I'm going to um, change this to say open purchase orders. Once you're through with this, this portion, we have a couple more questions. And there it is. Okay, go ahead with the questions. Okay, you may have just shown this, but if not, uh, someone asks, uh, every time they refresh a module, they have to click the drop down on every single column to click select all in each. Is there a shortcut to this? Um, I'm pausing here because that's not how the software works. Um, say that question again. Every time I refresh a module, I have to click the drop down on every single column to click select all in each. Um, yeah, the software doesn't work that way. It, it, when I collect, when I refresh a module or refresh a report, like I'll go back here to the inventory status. There it is, it's refreshed. There's no, nothing to drop down. I think there's something fundamentally um, wrong with the setup. Uh, I, I've actually never heard that. When they say drop down, are you meaning the, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I think that's one that you, you could wait until the end and we could cover that one-on-one uh, -on -one or call our support desk, but that absolutely should not be happening. It should be doing just what, you know, you have the executive module, you say refresh, you say inventory module, you say refresh, and it it's ready to go. All the screens are displayed. Well, is it possible that you have it set to not auto refresh? Let me go back here. Do you have it set to, yeah, I'm not sure what, it may be that it's not refreshing at all because you told it not to refresh. But uh, but uh, give our give our support desk a question on that. We'll, 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 we'll wait till the end and, and I can do that one on one. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the second uh, question is, uh, uh, they're saying they uh, ran a create unreleased PO in Macola. However, when they ran it, ran the report in dashboard, the quantities were very different. So their question is, how does dashboard come up with the quantity to order? 
the quantity to order or the quantity that has been ordered. Um, I guess I'm, I'm not I'm not sure the like if 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 I have this purchase orders. Let me go back here to purchasing. The red wrench allows me to this to say what categories do I want. I feel like I'm not answering the question though. Was this was this like an unreleased purchase order and it wasn't showing up at all, or was the quantity different? Yeah, we may have to look at that one-on-one -on -one because if you created a purchase order in Macola, PO number 101 for part number XYZ and you ordered 100, then dashboard is just reading that 100 and showing you, you know, showing you what um, what you ordered right here, this column. Okay. So so this should never be this should never be different. So I I think we have a setup issue or a um, now, it, it may be that you put some filters on it to, yeah, I guess, if you want to wait till the end, we can definitely definitely go over that. Okay, there's what, one more just came in, if we have time. Sure. Yep. Uh, they're saying, is there if you haven't shown already, is there a way to drill into the quantity allocated and or the on order quantity to reveal the McCullough order number and PO numbers for each field? Um, well, there's a couple of answers to that. Read that one more time. Is there a way to drill into the quantity allocated and or the on order quantity to reveal the McCullough order number and PO numbers for each field? Um, the, the answer is yes. Um, these are very good questions. The, the, one of the things we haven't talked about is what happens when you right click on an item number. So if I right click on the item number, this menu comes up. And then from here, I could apply to this. Like you want to know what orders are out there. I could look at this may not be the right one, um, but you can create custom ones. In other words, I right clicked on an item and I want to look at the open orders for that item. That wasn't the right item, obviously, but but um, so what this came up yesterday in, in one of the classes, I think what we would probably do is is create a new. So when you right click on an item, these these shared tabs would come up. That's what these are for. So I'm going to right click on an item. Yeah, let me bring up my E3089. I'm going to right click on an item and I'm going to see the shared tabs. So let's make believe that it's not customer orders, but it's uh, uh, inventory transactions or something. Um, might be like this here. So what it does is it takes you to another screen this is a little nonsensical because I brought up the same screen. Um, and I can bring up another screen. So let's let's uh, let's do that again. So I'm gonna right click on an item and I can create, remember we talked about our save and share, we can create uh, reports to look at. Well, this is what we would want to look at, open orders here. That's that's what the uh, so I can right click on an item, go down to my save and share, look at open customer orders, which is what this screen's going, it, it's gonna bring up this screen right here. And there are none because this is a, a, a purchase item. So these are a little advanced and yes, we, we, we want you to be able to, to uh, stretch and, and and really push the system. So um, probably on these to you know call our support desk and they, they can set up one because it's more than just showing the open orders. It may be that the columns that you want to look at on the open orders uh, are unique to you. See, it's, it actually created a brand new window. Now, these are good questions. Uh, what other 
other ones do you have, Bart? That, that's it for now. If anyone else has okay. a follow-up, we can ask. Okay, one of the things that uh, I want to talk about today also, I'm looking down through the... Um, Yeah, let's let's go over publishing again to um and and again not everybody's going to have that feature uh it usually is more of an administrative feature or for people who are or going to be developing reports for other for coworkers but um I'm going to right click on a tab name right click on the tab and then say publish now this is a good way to make a backup copy just for yourself, or you can publish it to everyone, or you can publish it to selected users. And then when they, the next time that they exit from the software and come back in again, they will have this new inventory status report. But the important thing is they have to exit out of the software and come back in it again. They won't just magically. So if they're saying, you know, Mike, you you published this report, but I can't find it. Um, you, they need to exit from the dashboard, come back in again, and then it, then it will be there. Um, one of the other new features that we have that might be of interest is what we call our purchase order generator. So one of our goals here is to be able to completely eliminate manual keying in of purchase orders. So let's make believe that I am a buyer planner by the name of Pete Bowers in the Cincinnati location. And I want the system to tell me, show me all the, the vendors by vendor by vendor, what needs to be ordered. So just for demonstration purposes, this is Atlanta packaging. So I'm going to say, okay, I'm just going to order those three. Then I, oh, I'm going to change my mind. I don't want to order this. And oh, by the way, the setup is wrong. This box, this comes in boxes at 2000. And at that point, then I say, I just click on this button called create PO. And there's the purchase order. And I can make changes to any of these fields. I can make this an unreleased or a released or a printed order. And when I hit save, the screen goes blank this goes away and then that purchase order is in there ready to deal with in Macola. So we are pushing data into Macola. I should mention another feature that might be helpful is that, and, and this has to do with, with um, you know, the kind of the new supply chain norm being that the due dates are changing constantly. So it's hard to go into Macola and change the request date or change a promise date. So what you can do in dashboard is you can right click, I'll widen this here, this is the PO number. I can right click on the PO number and I can say, I wanna edit the purchase order. So I'm now going to say, you know, they promised the order was gonna come in on July, make that a little more realistic, July 31st. So then when I save that, this has been pushed back into Macola. Now we also have another feature where you can do PO receiving. You wouldn't want to do it all day long, but you can do it from here. Uh, if you are, are a manufacturer that has a lot of component substitutions during production, you can, after the order's been released, you can right click on the order number and change the um, and and change the uh, what I want to say here. I want the order number, and, and and you can change the components. Kind of in the wrong screen here. Looking for a uh, an order number. Here's an order number. So I can right click, go to Macola process. Um, okay, I can't do that here for some reason. But the idea would be that um, I can also change report production and change of production. Okay, so I'm going back to our, our uh, handout for training. 
And I think we've covered a lot of these items. I want to, um, I'm, I'm encouraged with the questions that we're getting today because this shows that you've been using the software a little bit, you're adventuresome, uh, you're wanting to push things, um, you know, you're wanting to be demanding, I want this, I want this. And, um, you know, we, we have an excellent track record in um, providing that. Um, I'm trying to think of the, any other, I mean, we could talk all day about supply chain and uh, um, let me just show you something fancy we've done here. Um, let's say that in, in your company, as orders come in the door, you accept the order and then immediately you're wanting to know, um, can I make the product? So what we've done here is we've combined two screens together. I'm gonna click on here. It's exploding the bill of material. It's showing me all the components down here. And now it's saying, okay, I'm sorry, but I don't have this. These three components are not available. So you can just go throughout, throughout each of these. Other people, because everybody's different in the way they handle supply chain. Other people say, no, I just wanna look at my manufactured items. And when I have a manufactured item, I wanna be able to see if um, if I can make it or not. Now something messed this up and this is not, yeah, this is here. So this is the full bill of material for that. And, and in this case here, every single component is, is uh, out of stock. Okay, well, I promised to get everybody out the door in 55 minutes. Um, remember that you have unlimited phone support with the product. So um, if something's not working to your liking, like, uh, and, and whoever brought up the one or two questions, if you wouldn't mind staying, we can talk about that. Or, or if you prefer to do it later, uh, we can. But again, go up to help on your menu, go to about and so on. So the theme here that you're seeing is that we want to make Macola easier to use. We want to make Macola, we want to have you take advantage of the dollars you have invested in Macola. Uh, we've done all kinds of things. We, we've, we have an inventory class generator that properly uh, recategorizes uh, classes. In the sales and marketing area, we have the ability to import a forecast for the first time and be able to compare actual sales to budgeted sales, to forecasted sales. Um, so we've added this huge amount of functionality that um, you know, as you're using the software more and more and getting more comfortable with it, then you can start taking advantage of some of those, those other features. Okay, so remember everything is real time. All the information is available at your fingertips. We've expanded the database ex extensively to provide more information and um, and you have unlimited phone support. So Bart, any other questions? Anybody wants to stay? Uh, we can stay for a minute, a few minutes. Yeah, I think one is is asking if they do stay, how, uh, is there anything they need to do in order to uh, to talk or whether it'll be through the uh, Q and A? Um, oh, no we, no, we can talk, no. Okay, but do they need to be unmuted or, or just, uh, just stay? Yeah, they'll have, hey, have to be unmuted, yeah. Okay. You can unmute uh, them or I can unmute them. Okay. There is one other question. I'm not sure if we want to answer this afterwards then. Uh, do we have a list of things that we can use change McCullough processes on where it can go back and update McCullough and follow up uh, or a second part is, does that also depend on your McCullough version? Uh, so no, thinking of that email, yeah. that would be fine too. The, uh, the answer. Yeah, this, this works with all versions of McCullough. So when you right click and you change that promise date on a purchase order, that works with all versions. When you right click and you report production, when you right click and change a component in the bill of material, you know, the captured bill of material, that pushes it back. When you right click and add a customer order, add a purchase order, that's real time, pushed back into Macola. So the software auto detects what version you have if there's any adjustments, um, but it works, it works with all versions. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, well, thanks everybody. And uh, individual one or two, if you want to stay on, we can. Um, we'll unmute you and uh, try to get down to what what's uh, happening.
Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of the week.